Father, we are in your presence, Lord, and we stand uh, with our hearts filled with gratefulness towards your blessings upon our lives, O Lord. You kept us safe and you have given us another opportunity as brothers and sisters we could come together and to encourage one another, Lord. This moment we remember our brethren who need your intervention in their lives, especially Nelson and Linda as they are recovering from COVID-19 and other health-related issues. And we also pray that your uh, healing hand may be upon Mr. Surya Murthy, Lord, and he may be healed completely and may have a smooth uh, life and may bless your name, O oh God. Let your presence be with them. Let your strength be given to them, Lord, and let your life fill in each and every cell of their bodies. Lord, the time we are going to spend in meditation of your word may be a time that edifies us and will bring glory to your name. We want to hear your voice through your servant. And open our hearts to greater realities and depths of your love and nature and lead us and guide us. Your name be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Praveen. Today's... Uh subject, uh, as you may have read in the, uh, in the post that I put uh, this afternoon, I've titled, this, I've titled it Battle for Our Minds, Guard Against Self-Deception and Deception from Others. So uh, as we get into this, um, let me first read a scripture and then uh, I will just give a, a very brief background to uh, why I'm, you know, thinking of this particular topic. Uh, and I'm going to read from the book of Philippians chapter 4 and beginning in verse 4. I'll read it for you. I don't have uh, any uh, slides today, so uh, it would be a straightforward, uh, you know, uh, Bible study. Philippians 4 and verse 4. The Apostle Paul, writing to the Philippian church, says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Verse 5, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Verse 7 is what I would probably be more focused on. It says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So that's where I've uh, brought up this guarding your hearts and your mind, especially. And like I said, I titled this, uh, this today's uh, talk as uh, Battle for Our Mind. Uh, I think... It is very obvious today as we uh, are exposed to, you know, all, you know, the news and what is happening around us and the conversations that are taking place uh, within, so within social media, within societies, even between nations. There is a battle going on and it's a battle not just with guns and knives, <laughs> which of course is something that we see on a daily basis, uh, violence is rampant in our society. Sticks and stones and, you know, people, uh, you know, pelting stones against police and the various types of, uh, you know, uh, rallies taking place. But over and above that, the, the battle is always, is also with ideas. There is a battle taking place with regards to controlling your thoughts, controlling and influencing your thoughts, your beliefs, to sway your opinion, right? What kind of conviction? There is a battle to uh, get you to be convicted of certain ideology. The battle is basically the, you know, the, 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 the desire to control the way you think, the way you reason. Right. So I think uh, this is a very real battle, which, of course, is a battle that has been going on for a very long time. 
people wanting to control your mind. They want to influence your opinion. And it happens on a daily basis, 24 seven. Right, whether you are watching social media, whether you are talking to other people, there is a constant, what do you say, onslaught on your mind, trying to sway your mind to think in a particular way, to think or rather accept certain ideologies, accept certain uh, worldviews, like you know Franklin was talking about, people's, you know, trying to. Uh, impose their worldviews on on each other, and of course, uh, all of that obviously influences the decisions you make, the way you decide, and ultimately the way you act. Uh, your behavior is influenced by what you are convinced with, the way you think. You know, this became even more clearer to me when I was watching a. Uh, recent video uh, featuring a person called Tristan Harris. Tristan Harris is a former Google employee. Uh, he was employed with Google for a number of years, but he decided to leave and he has started, I think, his own uh, blog and, uh, and uh, you know, video uh, YouTube channel and all of those things. And what he was uh, what he experienced while he was in Google and, of course, what he had seen around was very, very telling. He says that there is a relentless effort to influence your thinking and your behavior. And the use of social media is being targeted against you in uh, influencing your thought process, what you like, what you dislike, and certainly then influencing your behavior and your decision. He says that there are social media platforms putting thoughts into your mind. You know, they are actually influencing your thoughts, your thought process. Control to control what you think and how you decide. And you know, he made this re revelation, which of course is a common revelation. He says one of the ways this is being done is through Mobile addiction. <laughs> Your mobiles are being used so that uh, this brainwashing can take place. And more and more people are using mobile technology to begin to, uh, you know, go into the deepest recesses, you know, recesses of your mind to control your thoughts. Uh, technological companies like Google, Facebook, you know, are trying to program your mind. Uh, creating, they are trying to create personalized and customized content so that you will click on those again and again and again. If you Have you noticed when you go to a video and you're watching a video, let's say on YouTube, immediately there are a whole lot of videos assigned to you or aligned so that you can click them again and again. So they, un they are trying to understand what you're watching, what your interests may be, and mind you, they have your history. They have documented your history, and the moment you get onto their platform, they are feeding you with what you must watch. In other words, uh, of course, you have the choice to click on it or not, but what happens is, uh, before you decide and you cognitively think, what they're trying to do is your brain is being fed with this information, which automatically creates curiosity. You see, it's very interesting how technological companies they are making use of psychology, yours and my psychology, to be able to create that sense of curiosity, that desire to want to know more. They put it tantalizingly in such a way where you will invariably click on that next feed, right? Uh, uh, and what happens is when they put those feeds, this desire in you of wanting to know more, this curiosity in you produces something called cortisol. It's a 
It's a chemical substance in your brain, which creates anxiety, mild anxiety. Right? This cortisol creates anxiety and produces this desire to keep checking your phone. And with what, uh, with, uh, with, info, what uh, with the research that is done, do you know, on an average, there are people clicking their phones 150 times a day within the waking hours of uh, whatever your waking hours are, people are checking at least on an average 150 times a day. And I'm believing that is an average. And so some are actually clicking more often, you know, their phones to go into those feeds and, and continue to lap up the information that's been provided. In fact, the research has shown that it's like a, your mobile phone has become like a slot machine. You know, the slot machine where you gamble and you put in some coins and then you, you know, you roll, roll the whatever it's called and you have numbers and you're hoping that you will, you know, hit the jackpot and you can become uh, a millionaire or a karodpati, whatever, you know, you, you say. But... Uh, some people are just not able to stop checking. So I want to ask you, uh, how are you mobile addicted? Can you put your mobile away? Or do you keep checking constantly, right? And unfortunately, checking also when you are in company. Now, if you're, you're checking when you're all alone, that's a different matter. But when you are in conversation with someone, eating dinner on a dinner table with others. It's amazing how people are so addicted that they will ignore somebody in front of them and keep checking their mobile phone, right? So we are being fed information and it's influenced your thinking, whether you like it or not, it is certainly influence, influencing your thinking and your decisions and your behavior. And unfortunately, as we know, very clearly, some get radicalized. Some are given the feeds on various platforms where they expose themselves to these radical sites and many of them get radicalized. You probably heard of the, the infamous WhatsApp University. It looks like all of us have a degree in WhatsApp, uh, a graduate degree in WhatsApp University. Because many of us, especially here in India, I don't know the US, maybe it is some other platform, but we all have a degree in these, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sites where you are getting information. And may I say, sometimes misinformation, fake news. And unfortunately, some take decisions that will affect their lives adversely. So this is the battle of the mind that I'm talking about. Once again, research done, there are something like 95 apps today that you can download and keep yourself busy for the entire day, right? 95 apps. Just recently, not, not recently, just yesterday, I was in a counseling session with one of our children in our school. The parents called us. Uh, they say that this child is behaving strangely. Uh, he is just... Uh, becoming very antisocial. He doesn't, uh, you know, converse with us. He is constantly on his mobile, right? Could you please talk to him? So I had an opportunity to sit down and have a chat with him. And he is, of course, has to uh, attend online classes. After that, he's on his mobile, sometimes up to 12 and 1 a.m. in the night. And he's getting up late because he's on his mobile. Uh, and of course, nobody knows exactly what he's getting into. And he has also mastered the technology of hiding his apps. Now, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> on the mobile, you can actually hide your maps or, or apps. And you can also delete history so that nobody knows what you're actually uh, looking into. And it's affecting him. He's come to a point where he's also saying, you know, I don't care what you do to me, but uh, uh, I want I want my mobile. And <laughs> the worst is he is finishing 
I don't know how many GB of data each day that he has to pay money to get extra, <laughs> extra gigabytes of uh, his phone or internet, you know, uh, availability so that he can get into these apps. So, uh, so the battle of the mind is a, a new battle that we are facing today. Uh, you know, like somebody said, it's time that we get off Facebook and put your face in a book. Let me repeat that. You know, uh, people, uh, there is a quotation that says, get, your, get out of Facebook and put your face in a book. In other words, the art of reading is now completely stopped because everybody is wanting to know what the other person is doing or, uh, you know, 300 friends of yours on Facebook are doing and you're wasting your time completely. So let me go back now to the scriptures. This is where the Philippians 4, the apostle is as uh, an important warning for us. And it's interesting that that warning, which was given 2000 years back, uh, applies for us today. He says, guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. He is basically talking about guarding our minds, which affects our heart. And of course, in the way we live. And the apostles, uh, you know, warning indeed is very, very much relevant for us today. I think we can definitely conclude that one of the greatest enemies of humanity uh, is the power of influence on the mind, you know, that others can wield over us. Uh, the power of influence on how you think and what you are convicted with what you adopt as your belief system is indeed a very, very powerful influence. And uh, we know that our greatest enemy uh, knows that very, very clearly. Our greatest enemy is, of course, Satan, the devil, and his demons. Notice what Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2 tells us. It says, uh, Ephesians 2 verse 2, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. I read this scripture also in, uh, in a, another Bible study we did some time back, talking about uh, demons and demon influence and of course demon uh, oppression and possession. But very clearly, uh, uh, there is uh, this uh, attests to the fact that Satan uses uh, the power of influence very effectively, right? Uh, he knows we can be persuaded by ideology, by belief systems, by doctrinal perspectives, right? We can be influenced into all kinds of disobedience and the devil and his demons use this particular media very, very, very effectively, right? We are again warned in the book of Colossians chapter 2. Uh, and in verse 8, we, it says, See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow uh, and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world, rather than on Christ. Once again, the emphasis comes on Christ and it says anything that deviates us from Christ is obviously a false philosophy, right? Uh, based on human tradition. And of course, the spiritual forces of this world, the dark uh, demoniacal forces make a field day with that kind of, uh, you know, uh, a platform. Recently, I was watching a documentary on, uh, uh, you know, DW, I don't know if you've heard of the DW channel, I think it's called Deutsche Wells. It's a German, uh, you know, uh, yeah, channel, and I found some of their documentaries excellent, you know, they have such professionalism in the way they produce the documentaries. So sometimes if you have an opportunity, uh, check on some of these documentaries uh, done by DW channel. But they were giving a, uh, a rundown on various new age philosophies. And I am shocked to you know, see the number of new new age philosophies 
that are available for people to pick and choose. I mean, it goes from healing to well-being to, to you know, uh, how you can brighten your face and how you can bring color to your face and uh, how you can have a good, uh, uh, you know, a navel. <laughs> I mean, it goes to, you know, from the more dangerous to the more ridiculous. Uh, but it was very interesting watch. And it's amazing that these people have a following. Now, talking about following and philosophies and control of the mind, some of you might definitely know recently there was a big controversy in India. Somebody spoke about allopathy and uh, uh, Ayurvedam and uh, uh, you know homeopathy. Uh, I won't uh, take names, but uh, but that, there you have it. You know there is this uh, very concerted efforts to try to influence your thinking and to debunk something or some uh, field of science. And they try to get you to take the alternative therapies. Now, uh, I'm not here to endorse any, any of those, but I'm only trying to show you how that there is a brainwashing technique, the old brainwashing technique, which is taking place. And to use a biblical term for brainwashing techniques, deception, right? Deception. So uh, in the just a few more minutes, let me just talk about deception. All of this is basically to bring deception. Like I said, fake news and deceptive information that's being disseminated. So uh, the Bible warns of uh, two types of deception. And that's what I want to uh, just basically talk about in the rest of uh, the time that we have. We should have some time for discussion. The two types of deceptions the Bible talks about is self-deception and deception from others. So very briefly, uh, we can deceive ourselves. We can get self-deceived, right? And Jeremiah 17, 9, which we have used very extensively in our fellowship is a powerful scripture that attest to the fact that self-deception is a reality. Notice what it says in Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? So basically, it's basically trying to say that the heart is deceitful. The mind uh, can deceive us. We can be self-deceived. And I want to just give you some points on how we can deceive ourselves. Number one. By being selective in our facts. How can you deceive yourself? You can be very selective in getting the fact and then making decisions based on half information, half knowledge. And that is dangerous, right? You deliberately leave out uh, some of the facts and then you only choose facts that suit yourself. And that can self-deceive you, right? So that is one way of self-deception. Second, self-deception, pride. <laughs> All of us have a sense, some sense of pride. Unfortunately, some have a, an extra dose of pride, right? And uh, pride can be self-deceptive. Let me read you a scripture from uh, uh, Obadiah. I mean, uh, we haven't gone to the book of Obadiah in a long time. I don't know when you read it last, but it has only one chapter. But there is an interesting verse uh, in Obadiah, verse 3. Uh, it's talking about Edom, you know, the nation of Edom and, of course, the people of Edom and how they uh, have persecuted, uh, you know, Israel. But notice uh, uh, an interesting verse in, 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 in 3. It says, your prideful heart has deceived you. Some translations have your arrogant heart. But basically, it's talking about pride. Your prideful heart has deceived you. You who live in clefts of the rock in your home on the heights, who say to yourself, who can bring me down to the ground? In other words, uh, they thought they were invincible. They thought they could never be defeated because they were hiding in the clefts and they were on the heights and thinking that their nation could never be defeated. So their prideful heart could be deceptive. Pride can be self-deceptive. Number three, narcissism. Narcissism basically means that you are in love with yourself. 
I, I don't have the time to explain the whole thing, but maybe you want to check it out. Narcissism is when you think that you can never be wrong. You, you tell yourself, oh, I can never be wrong. It's always the other person's fault. You never give benefit of doubt for somebody else. And I am right, you are wrong. That is a, 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 what you say, a, a manifestation of narcissism. And I'm just looking at Sanjeev Rao, Sanjeev Rao, I don't know who, <laughs> who I'm referring to. But there are people who think that they can never be wrong. Are you one of those? That's self-deception, all right? Uh, number four, lying to yourself. Do you know you can actually lie to yourself? We can have a, we have a wonderful example in the former president of the United States who, <laughs> who lied to himself and then lied to the nation that the election was stolen. Even after, you know, experts coming and professionals coming and saying it's not right, but he lied to himself and he made a number of people in his own nation believe that the election was stolen, right? You can lie to yourself about your abilities. You can say, oh, I am so able, I can do this and that and everything else. But while you may not be able, you may not even be qualified to do it. And that's how you have quacks. <laughs> quacks come and say, oh, I have the ability to heal you when he doesn't even have, have a professional degree. Uh, and Unfortunately, uh, you can be you can actually believe that you are able, you have ability when you're self-deceived. And one more thought on self-deception: not caring how you come across to others. When you ignore feedback that others give you about yourself, you decide not to believe it. You decide not to accept it. You are actually deceiving yourself. Because, you know, sometimes others can see you better than you yourself can see yourself, right? When others criticize you or bring some critique and you decide not to accept it or you decide not to take it and you say, oh, you are wrong. Well, that is another way of self-deception. So uh, self-deception is once again a battle for your mind. And you have to be careful that you are not self-deceived. So... Uh, Check your facts, check you know, the source of your facts. Uh, not all the information is fact. Don't fall into the pit of self-deception. And one of the ways to do it is to take counsel. That is one thing the Bible very clearly uh, advocates. Provide, take counsel, be humble enough to counsel. And rather than depending on your own expertise, right? Secondly, Deception from others. And of course, much can be said about this, but I won't take too much time on this. Uh, you know, Jesus uh, in Matthew 24, verse 10, you might remember, let me just read it for you. He says, at that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Deception from others is Definitely a reality. Jesus warned us about that. He said, be careful that even the elect could be deceived. So deception comes even from others. And of course, the master deceptor, the, the deceiver is, of course, uh, Satan, the devil. Uh, talking about uh, deception from others, many of you have heard of an app called Tinder. Have you heard of the word app called Tinder? I think it's a, a app. It's a dating app, you know, where you can find uh, uh, friends for yourself from the other sex and you, you want to probably have a dating experience. And once again, there was a documentary on this. And there were at least in this particular video, four or five ladies that came and said they were on this app. They got friendly with. at dinner, and many of them were raped. They were raped on the, is my internet okay, Praveen? I noticed there was a instability, yeah. Okay. Uh, they were raped on, on their dates. You see, they were deceived into thinking that this person that they are talking to is a wonderful person. They actually hide their, hide, hide who they actually are. 
they take you out on a date and then you are many of them got uh, raped and tinder does not take any responsibility they say it's your responsibility but that is the extent of deception that can come from others right uh, you know sometimes people can deceive you by telling you the truth does that <laughs> does that surprise you people can use the truth to deceive others it is just a little bit of you know a uh, twist in the truth for example satan can use scripture to deceive right i remember om prakash i don't think he is with us uh, today on bible study but i remember him saying you know you know a lot of these philosophies can sound very true but just a drop of cyanide you know he says you can take a nice bowl of uh, pudding but one drop of cyanide can actually kill you but everything looks good right so you have to be careful that uh, deception from others is a reality and we have to be on guard guard your mind so in closing then uh, uh just two thoughts i leave you with uh so that we may be protected against deception philippians 4 uh, chapter 4 and verse 8 says finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about such things in other words what is what are you allowing uh, to be in, influencing your mind right what kind of thoughts what kind of information is influencing you are they what is right are they what is pure are they what is lovely admirable excellent praiseworthy the bible tells us to look for these qualities or qualifications in the kind of information that you get that will protect you from self deception and being deceived by others and finally i go back to that verse which we started with in philippians uh, chapter 4 verse 7 it says and the peace of god which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in christ jesus in other words the peace of god guards you it tells me or it helps or 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 it, you know just to extrapolate from that it basically says uh, anything that is against the peace of god anything that is not any peace that is not of god can be dangerous so let the peace of god guard you so whatever is influencing you does it is it stamped with the peace of god on it is it is it are uh, controlled by the peace of god that protects us from the deception that is going around okay because god is love and because he is love he is peace and he is grace and it is in christ that we can have a sense of protection with regards to the kind of influences that we are exposed to daily and the battle of the mind is a, is a real thing let's protect ourselves and be careful about it okay so i'm going to stop there i think uh, i've gone a slightly over time but uh, we got a good 7 or 8 minutes um, any thoughts comments if you should have any questions feel free to ask i'm sure you might have something to add to what i have said uh, so the floor is open Good to see Doris with us. I'm not sure. I can't see Bertie beside you, Doris. I hope uh, Bertie somewhere hiding. <laughs> Anything you can add with regards to the kind of uh, you know technology we have and the kind of influences we are exposed to, other than of course five G. Five G is becoming controversial now.
Uh, Anil, go ahead. Now, in this context, I'm just reminded of that verse where it says, uh, uh, keep the right priorities in your life and seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So I think that if we focus on and don't clutter our mind with 101 other things, uh, that might make life and your thinking much uh, better and nobler. Yes, Anil. I think that's a good scripture. It talks about seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, his righteous ways. And obviously it can expand into the information world. Uh, does it have a righteousness of God? And so, yes, that, that, that is a scripture that is, uh, can be uh, helpful, very helpful. Any other ways to protect us ourselves from the battle of the mind? Uh, any confessions anybody have to make in having uh, been exposed to all kinds of philosophies there? Uh, are you, you know, uh, there is one, one thing I would like to say, and that is there is so much misinformation about the vaccine. And I was just talking about it this past Sunday. Uh, now the latest is that they are injecting metal, uh, you know, magnetic, magnetic uh, something into you where you can, metal will stick on your body. So, um, so uh, you know, are you influenced by these kinds of information rather than going to the right sites? Uh, and some people are actually uh, not taking the vaccine because they are influenced by this. I, 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 once again, it's very unfortunate. They make, they expose themselves to the virus because of misinformation. Yes. Vanessa, are you okay with uh, taking the vaccine? I know you had a question about it some time back. Was supposed to take it till now. I haven't taken the second vaccine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was supposed to take it last month, last month on the 8th. Okay. But the person who took me and went didn't uh, take me and go this time also. So I haven't gone because I don't know actually where the place is. Okay. Where I went for it. Yeah. So. Well, I'm but glad I think you... now they have extended it. I think after three months also you can take the second vaccine. So now. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. So one and a half months have passed. So before three months I'll take it. Yes. I think uh, you can still, uh, you know, take it. Right? Good to get the second dose. And then they're also talking about a booster dose sometime down the line. So, uh, right. But once again, that is another example of, you know, misinformation. And uh, unfortunately, uh, lots of people fall for it and uh, remain unprotected or they can actually infect others. Yes. Uh, well, we don't have any other uh, points of discussion. Um, it is more or less time up for us today. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, we will come back to you on uh, if you're going to start a series. We are hoping next month we can finish what uh, we had started on uh, the uh, eschatology, the study on eschatology, the study of last things. Next month, hopefully, I think Praveen and uh, Sachin will be ready with their presentation and I'll do one more so we can do three, Sunday, uh, three Wednesdays for that. If you should have any questions or any thoughts or any suggestions regarding our studies, feel free to send me a, a, a note. Uh, now we can use social media for that, so uh, feel free to do that. Otherwise, uh, yes, Anil, go ahead. Yes, no. uh, is Mrs. Noah doing all right? We haven't seen her on this uh, uh, Zoom meeting for a very long time. Yes. Yeah, because Linda and Clement were tested positive, they had to shift her out to uh, Aruna's place, that is uh, Clement's sister. So she there does not have access to, uh, you know, no. Uh, the net. So unfortunately, she can't be with us.
but I heard that she is okay, thankfully. Uh, she is 93, so for her age, she is still doing quite well. Wonderful. And uh, since Anil, you asked, maybe you can close in prayer, just remembering all of these people again, including Mrs. Noah, if you can close in prayer for us. Okay, let's pray. God Almighty, we come before you, Lord, thank you for thanking you for each and every blessing that you shower upon us all, Lord. Father, we are very, very grateful for the understanding you give us uh, of the scriptures, Father, and we are very grateful for this meeting that we are able to have uh, once a week at least, meeting and fellowshipping at least on Zoom, Father. Lord, continue to teach us and feed us with your word. Help us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Almighty, we pray for those who are uh, not with us at this time on this meeting or in otherwise are unwell. We do remember Linda and Nelson, Lord, continue to heal them. We are very, very grateful that they are much better and they are doing well, but please heal them completely and strengthen the family members who are taking care of them. We pray especially for Mrs. Noah, Lord. She probably is the oldest member and we uh, wish the very best for her, good health, look, continue to look after her father. And Lord, we just pray, be with all your people the world over. Let this uh, evil virus be contained as soon as possible so that uh, you know we can be rid of this menace. And those who are affected by this, Lord, we pray for your healing upon them all. So Lord, as we as we dis, you dismiss us, be with us, help us to be lights in the world, and continue to guide us in everything that we do, Lord. Thank you, Father. We pray and ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you again. God bless you all.